Hey gamers, it's Luke from GameZone here with another The Initiative video. This time we're taking an in-depth look at the return of an old friend, Sparkster the Rocket Knight. In case you've been living under a rock this year, Konami has revived the classic character and off the record, it's about time. This game is available for download on the Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network. So how does Sparkster stack up to the new generation of video games? Well, you have to watch our video to find out now, won't you? It's been 15 years since our hero's last adventure. Sparkster has long since retired and spends his retirement in peace, living on a farm with his wife and son. All of a sudden, the kingdom's peace is shattered as the wolf armada attacks. Without even thinking, Sparkster rushes into his home, gathers his old equipment, and prepares to save the kingdom once again. Rockin' Knight is a 2.5D side-scrolling platforming adventure game and is the fourth game in the series. This game is a direct sequel to Sparkster Rocket Knight Adventure 2 for the Sega Genesis and picks up after the fall of the Lizard Empire and forced retirement of the legendary Opossum Knight. Rocket Knight features two modes of play. You have Arcade Mode and Free Play. Arcade Mode acts as the main story of the game and has 15 levels with four chapters. Free play allows players to replay any level they want whenever they want, and it's great for new players to practice or advanced players to earn achievements. The gameplay is more like a mixture of the traditional Genesis and Super Nintendo spin-off, although Sparkster does have the auto-filling power meter from Rocket Knight 2. Still nothing else was brought over from Rocket Knight 2, which is a very good thing. Like the first game, our hero fights numerous foes on the land and in the air. The gameplay is more like a mixture of the traditional Genesis and Super Nintendo spin-off. Both of these stages are side-scrolling levels only, sadly no vertical space shooter like the epic Super Nintendo spin-off. Much has changed since Sparkster's heyday and he can't perform numerous boosts like in the spin-off, but he does have the ability to temporarily hover in mid-air. Although I don't feel the developers really made use of this new ability properly. There are a bunch of other tweaks though that are a welcome change, like bouncing off walls at a 45 degree angle, being able to shoot short range projectiles on land, a brand new drill attack which allows him to break through cracks in some surfaces, and of course his classic hanging from pipes routine. For the most part, I've found the controls to be very good, and it really does feel like the classic 16-bit games. At the same time, Konami has added things to make the game feel more modern. An example of this is the gameplay mechanics change while in the Wolf's Den. Players are no longer able to automatically charge the rocket, so in order to make it work, you need to thaw it out by standing near torches or finding fuel cans. You see, ice isn't just in the foreground and will have an effect on your hero. Pardon the cheesy line, but I thought that was really cool. Frankly, I'm a firm believer that graphics should be considered secondary when grading a game. Even so, with that in mind, I was blown away by the visual presentation of El Horn's HD Rebirth. The graphics have that retro feel, yet still manage to capture the colorful and bright world from my childhood for this generation. All the different stages looked incredible, and even my wife was dazzled by the game's animations and overall art direction. As impressive as the game is as a whole, the boss fights really made for some spectacular eye candy. So you're probably wondering, what on earth would I actually have wrong with this game? Well, two things come to mind. Rocket Knight is a very short game for today's standards, and that's a little disappointing considering the grand scale of the game's development, don't you think? Did you know this game can be beaten in about an hour? Keep in mind that I am a fan of the first game and the Super Nintendo version, so I'm holding Konami to different standards than the other reviewers, since I've been a fan of this franchise for a very long time. Don't get me wrong, I'm stoked to see Sparkster alive and well again. I just wish Konami took a page from Sonic 4's book and did Rocket Knight chapters instead of just one game. That way, more love for us fans. 15 levels just seems to fly by. Sure, you can always replay them or increase the difficulty, 
However, no matter how you stack it, the end result is it's just a short game. The last thing I have wrong with this game is its price point, which this is an issue I do agree with most of my colleagues over. Had the game been longer, I would say 15 or 20 bucks would be a no-brainer. Though since this game is about as long as, say, Contra and Castlevania Rebirth, it's just not worth the higher price point. And that's just the facts. Now please don't get the wrong impression that I don't like this game, because I do. The sole reason for downloading this title is for the gameplay, hands down. It's just a fun platforming adventure game. Part of the charm of this series of platforming games is the use of the rocket pack. Unlike the past incarnations, Konami has fine-tuned Z-Rocket and it works phenomenally well. It's easier to maneuver, ricochet off walls, attack enemies with it, and it can be used to propel Sparkster higher into the air. This feature was not found in his older games, but for me, it made this game really fun. One of the things I really enjoyed about this game is the replay value. Like most games today, Rocket Knight does feature achievements, leaderboards, and unlockable character skins. Namely, Gold Sparkster from Rocket Knight 2, and of course his rival, Axel. Just like with Sparkster on the Super Nintendo, my favorite levels to play in this game are the side-scrolling shooter levels. These stages have always appealed to me because of my love for shoot-'em-ups, and thanks to the game's free play feature, I can replay these levels anytime I want. SCORE! I bet you guys thought I would forget to mention the music. That would have been stupid of me because it's wicked sick! The tunes in this game are rearrangements of the original Rocket Knight Adventures on the Sega Genesis. Hopefully, Konami will re-release the original soundtrack because this is one soundtrack I want to get my mitts on. Personally, I really enjoyed this game. It retains that colorful look and feel of the great retro titles. Plus, it's a really fun game to play, which I can't stress enough how important that is. I would say this 2.5D game does some serious credit to what gaming was like back in the late 80s and early 90s. For the most part, it was a perfect balance of excellent gameplay and offers enough challenge to keep players from being too disheartened. Still, no matter how much I actually like this game, the truth of the matter is, it's just too short. Like Contrary Birth, the developers expect people to go for the achievements and unlock hidden stuff rather than adding more levels for folks to play. Listen, I know I may get some serious slack over this decision, but I would suggest you guys add this game to your collection. I guarantee you that you'll beat the game pretty fast, but I know you will enjoy it as much as I did. Thus wraps up another video done by yours truly. Keep it locked here on our YouTube channel for all kinds of new videos by me and other contributors. Don't forget to visit our main site for daily content you won't find anywhere else. Also, please don't be shy to leave us some feedback in the comments section below or drop by our forums to say hello. Wow, that rhymed. Anyway, this has been Luke from GameZone. My catchphrase as always is God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, gamers.